Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a driver is killed in a three vehicle crash overnight. We'll have the latest information from San Antonio police. President Trump outlining guidelines for the country to reopen. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And a live look outside with live cam, not quite as crisp as it has been. This is only the beginning of the warm up. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is April 17th. Yay, Friday. We're so excited to have a Friday, but we also have humidity. And we're purpling it up today. We are, and this is in honor of um, military children. All, of course, we're military city USA, right? Right. And they have, it's the month of military child in April, and JBSA is celebrating today as Military Child Day. That's right. Purple Update is celebrating honor military children. Get thanks for the support they provide to the Air and Space Force mission. Uh, it says here, wear purple and post pictures of you and your kids on social media, even with social distancing. It's a virtual Purple, purple Update. Up. Yep. So we're wearing our purple, and we do appreciate the military. Yes, indeed, we do. I like so. your tie. Thank you very much. Likewise. And Leslie's always lovely. So, um, you know, temperatures are about 20 degrees warmer than where they have been the past couple of yeah, days. Yeah, you so feel it. Whole different story out there and the humidity. You may run into a little bit of mist. I haven't seen any reports of any as of yet, but just with all this moisture coming back in here and all the humidity moving back on in, there may be a little bit of it out there. 66 degrees here in town. That wasn't even our high temperature a couple of days ago. 63 Comfort, 61 up the road in Kerrville. And yeah, these numbers, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Yesterday we were still down in the mid 40s, but the humidity as expected has definitely come back up and it's going to be on uh, the higher side throughout the rest of today. Mold is low. No oak showed up in yesterday's uh, allergen count. 70 today at noon, 73 for a uh, high temperature today. A couple of showers going to be possible, maybe a thunderstorm, about a 30, 40 percent chance for rain today. And then notice how temperatures drop off fairly quickly. We do have another front moving on through here. So the wind will shift around. Now that's going to cool us back down tomorrow, but it's not going to be that that crisp air because we're going to have a lot of humidity, some uh, showers around tomorrow. We'll only stay in the upper 60s tomorrow. It's going to be kind of an interesting situation as far as that goes. And then we really heat up toward the end of the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Hi, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, some construction zones downtown, but other than that, nothing out there. No accidents to report right now. Things are looking very smooth out in the roadways. Let's take a look, right? All right, 1604 in Calabria and Alamo Ranch. Very light traffic. 10 in the Y looking good. Not really any cars on the roadway there. And let's see, 281 is Bruce Wood looking good as well. So if you are heading out right now, please be careful. Make sure you turn on those lights and watch your speed. We want you to get to work safely. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Good to see you, sir. New this morning, a man is killed in a three vehicle crash on the city's south side. Happened near the intersection of Highway 16 and Mission Gate just after midnight. Police say a maroon car was pulling onto the highway from the access road when it was hit by a truck and a white car. San Antonio police say a man in his 30s was pronounced dead following the crash. None of the other drivers were hurt. Two big changes to city and county emergency orders. Starting Monday, face coverings will be a must for anyone 10 years old or older when out in public. That does not include exercising outside or driving alone in your car. The city says they're giving everyone a few days to get masks. The public will need to start wearing them and businesses will need to provide masks to their employees by the date as well. The other change, businesses who still uh, are still essential, must reduce the number of people in their facilities. They'll only be allowed 25% of their occupancy limit. Well, the changes come as we see cases rise to 918. It's an increase of 28 cases. When breaking the numbers down, we see 76 people are in the hospital. That number is down from the last report. And the number of deaths has stayed at the same with 37. Also, more people are doing better. 176 have recovered from the illness. Several surrounding counties still reporting a rise in cases. Hayes County seeing 117, Wilson County 19, Comal remains at 43, Guadalupe reporting 53 cases. Atascosa has nine, Medina County has 15, Kendall 14, Bandera County now has four cases with one reported at a nursing home. Meanwhile, the Frank M. Tejeda Veterans Nursing Home in Floresville now has eight that have tested positive for COVID-19. Today is another mega food distribution for the San Antonio Food Bank at the Alamo Dome, and all pre-registration is booked. Last week, about 10,000 people showed up. 
But at the same time, Via Bus and the Food Bank are working together to make sure residents do not go hungry. Via operators are delivering meals and supplies to homes and distribution points throughout San Antonio. The San Antonio Food Bank demand has increased since the pandemic began. Being a steward of, of the resources, the food that we have, especially in a rationed environment, has been one of the biggest challenges for us. Um, when we see families that need and when we don't have all the resources that we want to give them, that's what breaks our heart. And that's what really emboldens us to ask for the community for help. More than 650 food packages will be delivered to nearly 500 locations. The White House rolling out its plan for the country to reopen. The president says it will happen in phases. Now, some states think they can make it happen by the end of the month. Others have already extended stay-at-home orders. For more on this, here's ABC's Alex Brashe with Washington, from Washington. President Trump laying out his blueprint to reopen the country. America wants to be open and Americans want to be open. His guidelines call for a phased approach, though he says it'll be up to governors to decide when to lift restrictions. States would enter phase one after they see a two week decline in the number of people with COVID symptoms and in the percentage of people testing positive for the virus. And once a state can check those boxes, people would still be advised to maintain social distancing and avoid socializing in groups of more than 10. But businesses could look at ways to slowly return to work. If states are able to go two weeks without a rebound of COVID cases, they can move to phase two, where you could see some places like restaurants, movie theaters and bars reopen with social distancing protocols. The president, hopeful parts of the country could reopen by month's end. I think 29 states are in that ball game. Ohio's governor believes his state can be one of them. And I'm an optimist. Uh, we, we can do this. Ohio, part of a new coalition of seven Midwestern states working together on a plan to reopen. Seven states on the East Coast and three states on the West Coast forging similar alliances. Though some, like New York, have already extended their shutdowns until at least May 15th. Governors and health officials alike agree the key to the future is testing and tracking the contacts of people who are infected to prevent further spread. Dr. Deborah Burks on CNN. There is no disease where where we test 140 million workers on a weekly basis. CDC already has about 500 plus people on the ground in many of the states. The big fear, a potential second spike in some states. I mean, let's face it, this, this is uncharted water. There may be some setbacks that we may have to pull back a little and then go forward. And while testing is key, tracking the spread is just as important. In Salt Lake City, the health department there says it has successfully tracked 85% of the cases in that community. The state of Massachusetts also has an ambitious tracing program in the works. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Now to the latest on a crash that happened on the city's west side last night. Two people are in custody this morning after Bear County deputies say they tried to pull over a couple who was driving erratically after leaving an apartment. This happened at near Old Highway 90 in Acme. At one point, deputies say the woman was driving and then switched seats with her boyfriend before crashing on West Ridge and Laverne. We're told both tried to run, but they were caught. Deputies say the man did have warrants out for his arrest. 438, 66 degrees. Still ahead, we are going to take you to a small American town that claims to not have a single case of coronavirus. And they are earning the title as the safest place in the country right now. And next, for the first time in decades, China is seeing a downturn in its economy. How that's affected markets around the world. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're going to get a good chance of rain moving into our area today and tonight. Mike has details coming up. Well, 41 in your morning headlines. We now know the identity of the sailor who died after contracting coronavirus. The U.S. Navy says Chief Petty Officer Charles Thacker Jr. died from COVID-19. The 41-year-old being treated at the U.S. Naval Hospital in Guam tested positive for the virus back in March while he was assigned to the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Thacker was removed from the ship and placed in isolation. Officials say his condition got worse last Thursday. He was placed in intensive care. He passed away Monday. China's economy has shrunk for the first time in decades. It contracted 6.8% in the first quarter of this year, the first decline since 1976. China almost completely shut down in January to slow the spread of the virus. Though Beijing's drastic measures curbed the outbreak, its spread has had rippling effects, as you know, on the global economy. The World Health Organization wants everyone to know that drinking alcohol will not kill the coronavirus. Reiterating a lesson most people learn in their teens or 20s, drinking while sick just makes you sicker. That's because even though alcohol of certain strengths can kill the virus on surfaces, it doesn't work that way in your body. It's actually the opposite. 
Health experts say alcohol consumption weakens your immune system and gives the virus a leg up. WHO is encouraging governments to enforce measures to limit alcohol consumption. 442, still 66 degrees. Still ahead, looking for a new show to binge watch this weekend. We're going to tell you what's new to streaming. And next, working from home can be uh, very annoying if you don't have the proper equipment on well, what you need to do to make your new home office a little more efficient. Welcome back to Time House 445. Well, a tiny American town is being called the safest place in the country right now. The town does not have a single case of coronavirus. ABC's Will Reeve has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, inside the American town with zero cases of the coronavirus. We are staying that six feet apart, but even in the grocery store, the hardware store, post office, uh, there are markings on the floor where we are staying that distance away. Residents are taking COVID-19 seriously. The fire chief attributes his town's lack of cases to maintaining social distance and access to testing. We did test 66 people uh, within our community, including some essential workers and first responders. Uh, the next testing is going to be this Sunday. And my goal is to get three to 400 uh, people in my community tested, maybe more. If someone were to get sick, Point Roberts has a small medical clinic attached to the fire station. The nearest hospital is on the mainland. So what lessons can all of us learn from this community? Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Is your dining room, kitchen island, either your couch, now suddenly your office? That can sometimes leave you trying to get the job done in less than ideal conditions. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some simple ways to make things a little better. If this is you hunched over squinting at your screen, you might be experiencing muscle strains, headaches, and even dry eyes. Even if you don't have a fully equipped home office, you can still create a healthy workstation and for cheap just by using stuff around the house. Start with your chair. Ergonomics experts say you want your feet to rest on the floor and your lower back to fit snugly against the back of the chair. If your back doesn't reach, put a pillow behind you. And if your feet don't reach, create a foot rest. Your eye should be your arm's length away from the computer and the top of the monitor should be at eye level so you're gazing slightly down toward the center of the screen. Next, bend your arms anywhere from 90 degrees to 115 degrees when you place them on your keyboard. Now that you're comfortably seated, it's important to take breaks. When you're staring at the computer screen for really long stretches, we tend to avoid blinking. That may lead to eye strain and painful dry eye. So follow the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break and look away 20 feet. Finally, keep moving throughout the day. Taking short breaks to walk or stretch can help alleviate that neck and back pain you get sitting at a desk all day. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 448, 66 degrees. Time once again to check on the roadways on this Friday morning, and you said there's not really much going on. Not too much going on right now, Leslie. No construction, no accidents. If you are headed to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good out there, so it's always good news, especially on a Friday. Let's take a look at some drive times. All right, if you're going eastbound 151, to 1604 to 90, it's nine minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 to 1604 to I 35, 11 minutes. So, really good times there. All right, taking a look outside, 10 and Frio, that's looking real good. What else we have here? 10 and 1604 in the northwest side, looking very, very smooth. And uh, 1604 in Calabria, the Alamo Ranch area is looking light. And 10 at the Y looking just as light. Thank you, Nick. Uh, earlier this week and throughout most of the week, we've had crystal clear conditions, yeah. especially late at night, early morning. And I remember Detective Robert Darts had told me about this little uh, celestial phenomenon that was going on. This picture is from a couple of days ago, and it was just as the moon was coming up and off in the eastern sky, we had three planets lined up, and this is a great picture of that. So here we have uh, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, and this was looking off in the eastern sky right now. Thank you very much for that uh, KSAC Connect picture.
Very cool little phenomenon going on there. So make sure you send in all those pictures. We love showing them. All right, not the, like, almost looks like we might have a little bit of a star showing up there. We do have some cloud cover out the, this morning. Temperatures, it is a whole different story than what it has been. Of course, we have those nice crisp and clear mornings, and now we're back up to 66 degrees, about 20 degrees warmer than where it has been earlier this week. The humidity is also up. These dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere. We're down in the 40s. Now it's back up into the upper 50s and low 60s. So you notice the humidity when you step outside and the wind has obviously shifted around to the south primarily. That's what's pulling it on in here and it's going to continue to pump the uh, humid air in here throughout the rest of today. But watch what happens up there to the north. Now this is the one computer model that's much more aggressive with this front moving on through here. Some some other computer models don't really have it moving as far through, but we will see the front move through about dinner time tonight. That's going to be dropping the humidity out, but it's not one of those where it's to just clear things out and it's going to be you know back to what we have because we'll still have a lot of clouds a lot of moisture and also some rain we will have some showers around today and even a couple of them tonight and throughout the day tomorrow humidity comes back up in through late tomorrow night and sunday morning that's going to set the stage for maybe a stronger thunderstorm or two first of all this front Boy, don't need any graphics on this map to figure out where that thing is. 51 Wichita Falls, 37 Lubbock, and it is below freezing right now in Amarillo. So this cold air will work its way down in our direction. We won't get that cold, but it will definitely be on the chilly side. We'll make it up into the mid 70s later on today. Again, a couple of showers out there. And then overnight, we drop down to just about uh, 50 degrees here in town. And this is the one model, and I just want to show you this too. This keeps us really, really cold. Other models are keeping us a little bit warmer than that. And so once again, kind of splitting the difference. We've been going back and forth with this, going for the upper 60s for a high temperature tomorrow. So still on the cooler side with a couple of showers around here. And as far as rain, we will have a couple of showers around throughout the rest of today. And you can see there's that front moving on through, maybe even a thunderstorm or two. And then some showers scattered about going into uh, tomorrow as well as on Sunday. And Sunday morning is the day late Saturday night, I should say, in the wee hours of Sunday morning. Potentially some strong to even severe storms. 70 today at noon, couple of showers around the area. One or two showers, maybe a thunderstorm this afternoon. 73 for high temperature. The wind's going to shift around later on to the northeast after that cold front moves on through here, cool front, however you want to call it. And then tomorrow we start off at 50. So yes, it will be another chilly morning and then only 68 degrees throughout the day. Big difference then it's Saturday into Sunday. Temperatures stay basically steady overnight into Sunday morning, and then we get up to 85 degrees. Again, might have some showers and storms early on Sunday. Then we clear on out. Next chance of rain is going to be Wednesday, but it's going to be hot next week, mid to upper 80s. Wowza. Here we go. All right. Thanks, yep. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 452. We're at 66 degrees. Up next, as we head into the weekend, lots of new shows are available to stream and some of the more popular platforms. We're going to have a look coming up. This morning, Hollywood is remembering a couple of cinema greats who have recently passed away. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Veteran actor Brian Dennehy has died. Wait till you hear this, Tommy. She's got a son. Known for playing Chris Farley's dad in Tommy Boy, the sheriff going after Sylvester Stallone in the Rambo movie First Blood, Cocoon, and hundreds of other TV shows, movies, and plays. Denny, he died Wednesday night of natural causes in Connecticut, according to a post on Twitter from his daughter. A Tony and Golden Globe Award winner and Emmy nominee, Brian Dennehy, was 81. And the guy behind some of the most iconic images ever put on screen has died from COVID-19. Alan Davio was the cinematographer for E.T., The Color Purple, Empire of the Sun, Bugsy, and more. A five-time Oscar nominee and frequent Steven Spielberg collaborator, Alan Davio was 77. I'm tired of hurting people. I don't know how to stop. New movies streaming today. Shailene Woodley, Sebastian Stan, and Jamie Dornan are caught in a love triangle in the drama Endings Beginnings. Bad Therapy is a dark comedy starring Alicia Silverstone, Rob Corddry, and Michaela Watkins. Extraordinary is a ghostly comedy starring Will Forte, and Michael Shannon is trying to protect a small town in The Quarry. And on Netflix, Blackish creator Kenya Barris plays himself in the new comedy Black AF, which is kind of like Blackish, only a whole lot more real. And happy birthday, Jennifer Garner, the Emmy nominated actress, is 48 today, while Posh Spice Victoria Beckham is 46. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now, we're about three minutes away from the hour of 566 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look 
of a Bear County felony sentencing that had everyone involved working remotely. Plus, things aren't looking so good for the Girl Scouts right now. So that's because social distancing is cutting into their all-important door-to-door cookie sales. But there is a way you can help to still get your delicious cookies. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a teen shot during an Instagram exchange on the city's west side. We'll have the latest information from police. Plus, more on changes and procedures at the Bear County Courthouse as legal teams work remotely to keep cases going. Much milder this morning. At last check, 66 degrees out at the airport. We'll check in with Mike, see how the rest of the weekend is looking. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is April 17th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Let's get an update on your weekend forecast from Mike. And we have a chance to have a pretty wet weekend. Yeah, especially uh, tomorrow, early Sunday. Also, as far as temperatures, it's going to be kind of one extreme and the other just about over the weekend. I'll explain it in a moment. And first of all, as far as uh, extremes, we've gone from really chilly and crisp and clear to it's warm and humid. As a matter of fact, these numbers are about 20 degrees or so above where it's been the past a couple of mornings up in the 60s. And notice that top number over there. The dew point is at 60 right now, which means you notice the humidity when you step outside all around the area. Again, we're on the above normal side as well. A normal high is right around the upper, excuse me, normal low is in the upper 50s. So we're about, oh, seven, eight degrees or so above normal on average. 61 in Kerrville, 62 in Helotus as of right now. Again, these dew point temperatures have definitely started to go up and they are going to continue to go up throughout the day. Now we do have another front that's going to move through here, though, later on this evening and it's Kind of interesting situation. Molds on the low side. No oak showed up in yesterday's pollen count, which was nice. And we're going to make it up to 70 today at noon. 73 for a high temperature. And then a front moves on through here. Now, obviously, we're going to be on the, the cooler side of normal once again. Front moves through about dinner time, and that's going to knock temperatures down pretty good. Winds will shift around. We'll still have some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms scattered around the area today. Then tomorrow, cool start. Stay on the cool side. More rain. Then we heat up on Sunday after potentially some strong storms. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, Nick? Hey, Mike, good morning. No, no, nothing's going on right now. Things are looking good out there. Very light traffic, no accidents, very little construction. It's only in downtown, and I don't even think those are active zones. So right now it's just a little construction zone. 16 to 4, Claiborne Allen Ranch looking good. 10 at the Y looking great. Hardly any traffic on the roadways right now. 281 at Sprucewood over there near the quarry. Still acting, still looking very good. And uh, 10 at Crossroads uh, looking very light. So right now things are looking good. If you are heading to work today, please be safe. Buckle that seatbelt, turn those lights on, and get to work safe. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Governor Greg Abbott set to give another update on the COVID-19 situation here in Texas at noon today. We'll have that live for you here on KSAT and KSAT.com. Here at home, three San Antonio firefighters have now tested positive for COVID-19, all from the same fire station. Fire Chief Charles Hood did not name the station, but did say all firefighters assigned to the facility will be placed in 14-day quarantines. In a statement, he went on to say, in part, quote, the fire station and all fire apparatus have also been deep cleaned and disinfected as part of this effort. The quarantine of these firefighters will in no way affect our service delivery, end quote. Meanwhile, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says the number of inmates with COVID-19 at the jail is at 10, but eight tests are still pending. One inmate continues to be held on a single parole violation for a nonviolent offense, while hundreds of others have been released in recent weeks. It's all to help limit the potential spread of the illness. Attorney Trey Moore says his client, Narciso Garcia, is a military veteran, someone with underlying health conditions. Garcia was on parole for a felony drug conviction taking college courses when late last year. According to Moore, he suffered a medical episode and missed a meeting with his parole officer. State authorities issued a warrant for Garcia's arrest, and he's been in custody since early February. When Daniel Zabrano was sentenced to 10 years in prison this week, he was in jail. He was convicted on drug charges in January and chose to have the judge, not a jury, set his punishment. But his lawyer, the judge, and prosecutors were all at home. Paul Venema takes us to a felony sentencing here with everyone involved working remotely. 
This is where, until the pandemic, Judge Catherine Torres Stahl presided over felony trials as state district court judge. This is cause number 2019. That's all changed now. Her home has become her courtroom, her staff, attorneys, and defendants all joining her remotely through a program called Zoom. On this day, she sentenced Daniel Zambrano and co-defendant Anthony Mireles on felony drug charges. From, from your standpoint, what this is, what, what this whole process has been like, it's plowing a lot of new ground technically and legally. We've done things a certain way for a very long period of time, and so we have to kind of step back and figure out, you know, confidentiality issues, uh, document sharing. Tonis Stahl said though judicial considerations are a priority, she's also concerned about the safety of the public. So working remote makes good sense. As for feedback from defendants... It seemed that they were fine with the process. Uh, there was uh, somebody that was working with them at the jail. And is there any other legal reason why Mr. Midellis cannot be sentenced today? Though working remote is a necessity in this pandemic, Torres Stahl says it'll likely be used to some degree when we return to normal. Will we ever see you on the bench again? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Uh, I definitely miss the courtroom and I definitely uh, miss all the interaction with, uh, you know, everyone in the courtroom. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. From trying to find an open curbside slot at HEB to a local principal gathering the top 10 students of a senior class, it has been a busy week on KSAT.com. Eric Hernandez gives us a look back at the top stories in your week in review. This big blob of grossness is what happens when you flush wipes down the toilet. More people are turning to wipes right now, and San Antonio Water System staff knows this because they are having to fix more clogged pipes. Sauce tells us there is no such thing as flushable wipes and that anything other than toilet paper should be thrown in the trash. Trying to find an open curbside slot at HEB? A freelance software developer in San Antonio has built a new website that allows customers to search for curbside availability. The website allows consumers to search by zip code to see the soonest available opening at their local store. We have a link up to this website so you can start searching. It's nothing but sad news for current high school seniors who are missing out on a lot of memorable moments. Somerset High School principal Justin Saunders set out to personally deliver students some good news. He visited each of the top 10 of the senior class to let them know their class ranking. And a first in over 10 years for Somerset, the entire top 10 was comprised of all females. And speaking of high school seniors, a local photography business is giving back by providing free quick take senior sessions. All you have to do is call to reserve your spot. Also, they've started a portrait for heroes program where others can give full sessions to an essential worker. And finally, we've lost count on what day of quarantine it is, but if you need some sunshine, it may be worth taking the family for a hike. Right now, all state parks are closed, but city trails at parks are open, including some natural areas. We have a list of spots to visit. Just make sure to continue to practice social distancing. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, police say a 16-year-old recovering in the hospital after being shot in the foot. Happened last night on Spoonbill Court on the city's west side. Police say the teen was trying to buy something off the shooter's Instagram page while meeting with the suspect. Police say the suspect shot the teen in the foot. SAPD says the suspect got away from the scene in a vehicle. 508, 66 degrees. Still ahead, Girl Scout chapters are hurting as social distancing cuts into door-to-door -door cookie sales. More on what you can do to help. And next, more on why a popular butter company is changing up its packaging after more than 100 years. And live cam giving us a look outside. Boy, those beautiful crisp mornings are a thing of the past. It's time to get back to reality. Your time now, 511. In your morning consumer headlines, Google is giving its workers eight more weeks of paid family leave. That means employees can now get 14 weeks of leave because of the pandemic. Last month, the tech giant gave caregivers two weeks of leave with an option to take four more. Google says this only applies to full-time employees and they can take it either consecutively or adjust their hours over several days. The move follows a similar one by Microsoft, which announced last week it was giving employees 12 weeks of paid parental leave.
Land of Lakes changing up its packaging. The company has scrapped the Native American woman who was on its dairy products for nearly 100 years. She's being replaced by lands and lakes and the phrase farm owned since 1921. The change announced back in February when the design change was made to some products. New packaging expected to be on all Land of Lakes products by the end of this year. And Instagram is working to help the struggling restaurant industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. The social media app has added buttons and stickers to make it easier for people to support local restaurants and bars. Businesses can add stickers to their Instagram stories and profiles that will allow followers to buy gift cards, place food orders, or even donate money. The fundraiser button will redirect users to Facebook where they can donate via a fundraiser page created by business owners. Every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. There's a truth. It's exactly 513, 66 degrees. As HBO Max gets set to launch, the planned streaming service already has a trio of assignments for famed director J.J. Abrams. And next, how Facebook is starting to alert people who have interacted with misinformation about COVID-19. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves the moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. Welcome back, 516. Facebook says they have started alerting people who have interacted with the misinformation about the coronavirus. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook says it will be alerting users who have liked or commented on dangerous misinformation about COVID-19. The social media site has since removed those fake postings, and Facebook says the alerts are set to appear in its news feed over the coming weeks. TikTok has rolled out new parental controls. The family pairing feature allows moms and dads to link their accounts to their children's and make changes remotely. Parents can shut off direct messages, restrict content, and set screen time limits. Finally, the Girl Scouts are turning to technology to sell cookies. Cookie sales are down because the organization suspended door-to-door -door sales. So the Girl Scouts are reminding everyone that you can buy your favorites on their website so there will not be a disruption and cookie time. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day and an even better weekend. Thank you, Kenneth. 517. Check on the roadways once again. Boy, your job's been pretty easy the last couple days. <laughs> say. At least here. Yeah, it's been pretty easy. But no, we, we do have an accident right now, Leslie. Believe it or not, Ingram and Oak Hill. It's a major accident, two vehicle accident. They're at that intersection. SAPD is on scene, and it looks like a wrecker is on the way. So that one should be getting cleared up here pretty soon. And I don't think it's going to uh, really affect your morning commute there. All right, let's take a look outside now. 281 in Grayson, looking good. Very light traffic on that on 281. Uh, 410 at Austin Highway was good. 410 at Fredericksburg, looking great. And uh, I 10 at Callahan looking smooth. Thank you. Nick. I like smooth. smooth. I got a question for you. Though. I see a lot of fuzz around the lights. Have you seen anything that looks like mist on the road at all? So no, no, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Okay. No. I haven't seen any reports of anything, but you know, with all the it's coming out there, yeah, there's a chance to see some mist. So. A lot of cars on the road this early no. this morning once again. All right, and you don't need a jacket this morning. No, it's not like it was. I mean, it's a little bit cool. You don't need a jacket, but long sleeves probably in the morning. Right, but I mean, temperatures are now just on the other side of normal from where we were earlier this week. And take a look at this picture. Of course, we did have some clouds that moved in yesterday. Barely caught a small glance of the sunset. Sure does have a lot of colors. I don't think we're going to be seeing any good sunrises this morning. Unfortunately, got a lot of clouds out there, and it 
almost looks like I can't tell if that's just reflection or if there's a sheen on uh, 410, but just kind of watch out for a little bit of mist like we were talking about 66 in town, about 20 degrees above where it's been earlier this week, 61 Bernie and 65 up the road, New Braunfels Canyon Lake. And these numbers dew points measure moisture in the air. Of course, 60 is always that kind of threshold number where above that you start to feel the humidity. So you notice it when you step outside this morning, not that dry, crisp air like we've been having. Wind is out of the south uh, east primarily or no wind really to speak of. It's going to be kind of light throughout the day and then winds will be picking up somewhat later on this evening about dinner time as the front moves on through here. So we will continue with the southeasterly wind that's going to continue to pull in more humidity. So these dew points continue to go up into the mid to upper 60s. Then here comes this front and by about dinner time or so, obviously a little sooner in the hill country, it's going to be working its way through. Now this computer model really has this thing barreling on through here. And so this particular model is one of the coldest as far as tomorrow is concerned. Other computer models don't have it really moving as far through and as much of a cold air invasion. So that's really the discrepancy, especially with tomorrow's uh, high temperatures. But uh, as far as the humidity, yes, dew points will be dropping down, but we're still gonna have uh, enough moisture relative to the temperatures, enough cloud cover, and also some showers. So even though this front moves through, it's not gonna be like what we had earlier on in the week. Now, throughout the day tomorrow and then going into Sunday, humidity will come back up a little bit and that's going to set the stage for maybe some uh, some showers and a couple of stronger thunderstorms late tomorrow night into early Sunday. Yeah, it's cold up there. 30 in Amarillo as of right now. So obviously this is a late season, unseasonable chunk of cold air, and that's going to continue to work its way down in our direction. We will make it up to the mid 70s later on today, and then tonight that front moves on through or by evening hours, and so that'll cool us down. I do agree with the low 50s for low temperatures tomorrow morning, but this computer model only puts us in about the upper 50s, close to 60. I think we're going to be closer to the upper 60s later on tomorrow as far as a high temperature is concerned. Still below normal, obviously. And as far as rain, we will have a couple of showers around the area today. There's that front moving on through, so it may actually touch off even a, a thunderstorm or two. We'll have some scattered showers around tomorrow. And then going into tomorrow night, we do have the chance for a couple of more showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the uh, strong to severe side. So Storm Prediction Center does have kind of the uh, northern half of our viewing area just about under the marginal risk for a severe storm and that would be late late tomorrow night in the wee hours of Sunday morning 70 at noon today with a couple of showers around the area and then a high temperature today up to 73 with again a few showers maybe a storm that front's going to come through about well, obviously sooner in the hill country, about dinner time, winds will shift around to the northeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it is going to be cooler tomorrow morning and staying pretty damp all day long. Going for 68 for a high temperature tomorrow, sort of a mixture of some of the computer models. And then Sunday we start off with some rain. Temperatures stay basically steady overnight tomorrow night into Sunday. And then we get up to 85 degrees Sunday afternoon. It'll be somewhat dry, but the humidity is going to move in here and it's going to be hot and humid next week. Chance of rain Wednesday. Wow, that's a big difference. Welcome back to April. I was going to say, yeah. you said now we're on the other side of normal. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, right now, Mike. 522, 66 degrees. Up next, more on how some big name musical acts are showing their appreciation for those on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis. Guess what, Leslie? What? It's time for some more lottery numbers. Yay. <laughs> Pick three numbers, 045 with a fireball of nine. Oh, there's more. Daily four, two, one, four, four with a fireball six. Okay, let's go on to your cash five numbers, 46, 31, 32, 35. Texas two-step, 2, 3, 18, 23 with a bonus ball of eight. Plenty of entertainment news for you today, whether you're staying inside or taking care of those affected by the pandemic. Here's David Daniel with our Hollywood Minute. Gloria and Emilio Estefan are showing their gratitude for those on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis. Their Estefan kitchen has begun providing free meals to Miami area first responders and healthcare workers at hospitals and police and fire departments. They say they'll deliver the fresh meals daily for at least a month. What do you want to see? What must you see? HBO Max has yet to launch, but the planned streaming service already has a trio of assignments for J.J. Abrams. His Bad Robot Productions is set to create three one-hour dramas one set in the Justice League Dark Universe, plus Overlook, inspired by The Shining, and the original drama Duster. They're the first projects under the mega deal Bad Robot and Warner Media signed last year. Mm -hmm.
Creators from around the world, while we are all social distancing, why don't we have some fun? Action! The short film company Great Big Story wants you. Create and send them your 60 second film, any subject using any kind of camera, as long as you shoot it inside wherever you're self-isolating. The best will be featured on Great Big Story. Good luck, wash your hands, and happy filmmaking. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, 66 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, as new data about the COVID-19 pandemic comes out, millions of Americans struggle to stay afloat financially. Plus a closer look at coronavirus is affecting local arts programs across the city of San Antonio. Stick around. Welcome back. Just about 530, 66 degrees on your Friday the 17th. Thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. We've got some rain to talk about moving into our forecast. Pretty much tonight and tomorrow. What about today? Is it, are we going to see any today? Well, there's a little bit of mist around. Yeah, we will see some rain uh, throughout the afternoon today. Kind of some scattered showers around here. About a 40% chance for some rain today. Haven't seen really any, um, any mist on the roads yet, but just watch out for a little bit of mist if you are hitting the roads because the humidity has definitely come back on here, in here. And as it continues to pump on in, it may squeeze out a little bit of mist. Boy, it's a whole different story than what it has been earlier this week when those temperatures were down in the 50s and 40s. Now we're in the mid to upper, or excuse me, low to mid 60s around the area. Actually on the above normal side, upper 50s is the normal low temperature right now. And the humidity, like I said, has come back in here. So these dew points measure moisture in the air. They were down in the 40s a couple of days ago. Now it's back up into the uh, upper 50s and 60s. And the humidity is going to continue to go up throughout the day setting the stage for some of those showers. Molds on the low side as of yesterday's count and didn't have any oak show up, which is nice. Maybe we're finally done with that season, although there's still a lot of those little dingly doos out there. Isn't that what they're called? The oak things, dingly doos? All the time. You make yeah. up new names all the time for them. We're, we're, we're going to go with whatever you say. But you know what I'm talking about. We do. I know. I, I, you changed it from dingle fobs, I think. Yes. Dingle fobs is what you used to call them. Right. I think they're actually catkins officially, but anyway. <laughs> They're what? No, that no. Catkins. I Is think. that what they are? Yeah, I think so. We'll look it up. I will. Um, look it up for you. I'll stick with dingly doos. Uh, anyway, cloudy, mist, warm, and humid this morning, and then a couple of showers later on today. Maybe even a thunderstorm. We're going to hit the low to mid 70s. Then a front's going to move through about dinner time or so. Obviously, sooner in the hill country. Right now, it's only about 30 up in uh, northern portions of the Panhandle. Cool start tomorrow, and we'll have some showers. We stay in the upper 60s. Going for upper 60s for a high temperature tomorrow, which is sort of a blend of a couple of different uh, computer models. And then we may have a couple of, uh, th excuse me, stronger thunderstorms early on Sunday. And then we clear out and boy, it's going to heat up mid 80s and get hotter next week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Salis. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your uh, Friday morning there. All right, still working on this one accident by Ingram Park Mall. It's on Ingram and Oak Hill Drive. It looks like it was a two vehicle accident. Wrecker is on scene. Hopefully they can get this this accident cleared very soon. I don't think it's going to affect your morning commute at all. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, you got a 12 minute commute. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes as well. Very good commute times there. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guy 281 at Grayson looking good. Ah, that shot's always murky there, but looking good 410 at Fredericksburg. Great 10 at Crossroads looking really good. 10 at Callahan East, just just west of the southwest of there is looking good. And uh, 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds looking really smooth. All right, everyone. Hope you have a great morning. Mark Leslie back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, some relief could be on the way to even more people who need it under a plan before the San Antonio City Council. It would provide help with things like rent and utilities for those whose lives have been disrupted by COVID-19. Katrina Weber live downtown with details on it, so we understand this isn't a done deal yet. Well, that's right. It is still a plan. It was put together by city staff members and presented to the city council yesterday, but it seems that the city council members still have some logistics to work out before they put it to a vote next week. Now, the plan calls for rebranding a current assistance program that the city already has and calling it the COVID-19 Emergency Housing Assistance Program. The staff members who put this together say with a $15.8 million budget, 
It could help about 10,000 families who are struggling because of the pandemic. That's based on the idea that each of them would get about $1,500 for rent or mortgage, plus other money for things like food and gas. The plan would pool money that the city currently has with funds from the federal government and private donations. And again, the city council is still going over some of the details, such as how they would give this money out. But again, uh, this is on the table for a vote next Thursday. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, researchers at the University of Washington are updating their coronavirus pandemic model. The model is often touted by the Trump administration and may show whether the U.S. is making progress against the virus. But in the meantime, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, parts of the country are preparing to start moving forward. The COVID-19 pandemic still has a grip on the United States. Places like New York seem to be stuck at the peak for longer than we originally expected. But there are positive signs. Looks like a number of states in the South, for example, will have smaller epidemics than we were expecting. There are more than 671,000 confirmed cases in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University, but millions of Americans are affected by COVID-19 financially, while social distancing and stay-at-home orders are in place. The bills don't stop between now and then, and the money is rapidly running out. 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment over the last four weeks, and some are treading water with their rainy day savings. I would say by the end of April, maybe first two weeks of May, that'll be gone. The White House in a tweet is calling on Congress to pass increased funding for the Paycheck Protection Program, saying a simple one-page bill will get the job done. No liberal pet projects. Democrats say Republicans are preventing progress on the PPP, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting, serious flaws are keeping far too many small businesses from receiving the resources they need. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Former Texas A&M star football player Von Miller now plays with the Broncos, has tested positive for COVID-19. Miller now in self-isolation at home. The Broncos say he is in the care of team doctors and is doing well. The 31-year-old is a star linebacker for the team and is set to enter his 10th NFL season. He is the second active NFL player to report testing positive for coronavirus. Right now, 536, 66 degrees. Coming up next, more on how the city and local arts programs are changing the way, their ways due to the lack of funding during the pandemic. Looks like it's going to be a rainy part of the weekend. Well, part of the weekend is going to be rainy is what I meant to say. Mike will explain coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Just about 539, we're taking a closer look at how cutbacks due to coronavirus are affecting local arts programs across the city. More than three dozen programs are set to lose money. RJ Marquez breaks down the numbers. <laughs> There is going to be a 20% reduction uh, for the remainder of the fiscal year on across the board on the arts agencies. The San Antonio arts community, already hurt by lack of patrons and closures, received the news last week their budget would be cut through the 2019-2020 fiscal year, which ends September 30th. The cutbacks were not entirely unexpected. These arts agencies get their funding from the city's hotel occupancy tax, which has been decimated by the pandemic. 37 programs in total will be affected. The Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center will see the biggest hit. 20% of its budget equals $114,968. The Whitty Museum is set to lose $99,199, while the San Antonio Museum of Art is projected to lose $69,400. Music programs that will take a major hit include the San Antonio Symphony, which is expected to lose more than $76,000. The Youth Orchestra of San Antonio is set to lose more than $47,000. CACI, a nonprofit that helps develop young artists, is projected to lose nearly $48,000. It's even tougher for smaller programs, many of which depend on this funding just to remain operational. They could close entirely. All told, nearly $1 million will be lost in funding for local arts and music programs. Nuremberg hopes these cutbacks are only temporary. He said city and county leaders are looking for ways to access emergency relief funds for such an important element of San Antonio's cultural history. There was a famous adage, you know, um, during wartime people would cut arts funding and, and someone said, so well, why are you fighting, what are you fighting for then? Arts and culture are such a vital and, uh, and critical part of this community. We want to protect them as well. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday.
Now 541, 66 degrees. Coming up next, when it comes to getting your stimulus check, could the federal government be running out of money to cover them? We have more on that. Right now it's 543 in your Friday morning. An astonishing 22 million people have lost their jobs in recent weeks. Many have gone without any pay as state unemployment programs buckle under the pressure. And now part of the government stimulus package has run out of money. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details. This morning, Americans are seeking financial help in record numbers. More than 22 million people lost their jobs in the last month. And the state and federal funds that were promised at the start of the pandemic have yet to arrive for many of them. I was part of a massive layoff uh, of about 100 employees. Tina Plastini of Monroe, Connecticut, applied for unemployment three weeks ago and still hasn't heard anything back. I am a single mother. I have no money no food, and, and I am trapped waiting for the Department of Labor to approve my claim. Todd Salen lost his job as a restaurant server in Fort Lauderdale. He applied for unemployment one month ago today and has yet to see one penny. I personally have been using my savings. Um, obviously, that can't last forever. Many Americans started getting their federal funding this week, a $1,200 check, but not everyone who's eligible has received their check. Another key piece of the administration's stimulus bill is the Paycheck Protection Program, which provides small business loans that are forgivable, as long as 75% of the money is used for payroll. But that program has now officially run out of money. The administration is trying to get Congress to add more funding. It is so popular. The banks have been incredible. It's super frustrating. Nick Ponton is a small business owner in New York City. He says he's been trying to apply for a loan since the morning applications went live two weeks ago and learned yesterday that he's not getting a loan because the money has run out. At this point, I've got no faith left in the federal government to exercise any sort of meaningful relief. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Two astronauts and a cosmonaut who have spent months on the International Space Station have landed back here on Earth. NASA astronauts Andrew Morgan and Jessica Meyer undocked from the ISS in the Soyuz and landed in Kazakhstan earlier this morning. Morgan's 272-day mission began on July 20th, 2019, while Meyer and the cosmonaut left Earth on September 25th of last year. All right, Mike, you're going to love this one. Are you ready? Yep. Lego has unveiled a new Star Wars set, and this thing cannot really be called a toy. At first glance, it may look like a normal Lego version of an A-Wing Starfighter, but this is part of Lego's Ultimate Collector Series line. It contains 1,673 pieces. And if that doesn't get it squarely toward the adult crowd, the price tag will. The kit will set you back 200 bucks. It comes out May 1st, just in time for the fan created May the 4th be with you holiday three days later. <laughs> that $200 Lego set. That's a cheap one compared to some of these other ones. Some of them. I could totally see Mike having fun with that one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I've seen some pretty pricey versions of the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. I think Star Destroyer, stuff like that from Star Wars. Yeah, that's not really my bag, but <laughs> I know that it is his. So <laughs> there you go. Understandable. 546 right now. Time to check on the roadways once again. I know we had an accident earlier. Is it still working? Yeah, it looks like it's just about to get cleared up. That accident's going to be here at Ingram Road and Oak Hill Drive near Ingram Park Mall. This accident's been active for about 35 minutes. Uh, Wrecker is on scene, and it should be cleared up right about now. All right, let's take a look at the Trans Guy. 10 in Callahan looking good. Traffic's definitely starting to pick up there just a little bit. 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds. Same uh, traffic starting to pick up. 10 and 1604 over there near the rim is uh, picking up a little bit and 1604 at Calabra. Still light traffic there in Alamo Ranch. So if you are headed to work today, expect a smooth ride and a smooth commute. Watch that speed. We want everyone to get into work safely. Thank you, Nick. So are you going to buy it? No. Oh, okay. You're not. No. No. I mean, get back to us. <laughs> hey, we ordered a, a lot to take in. We ordered a puzzle because we wanted to do a family yeah. puzzle thing, and it's pretty impossible to find. If you tried to, you'll know that. I ordered a week ago. It came in, and it's a paper puzzle that has little numbers and letters and dots and squares of color that you have to put colors based upon that. And it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Hmm. Wow. Have you ever seen the puzzles that don't have uh, straight edges or yeah. square edges, and there's one extra piece? Oh, boy. That's just mean. That's for those. <laughs> that is uh, just mean. I'm with you. I, I, I'm under I, enough stress right now, please. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's just, it, those great things are, are perfect to take your mind off everything. I'd just rather eat.
Just for okay, <laughs> that's an option too. Or stop and smell the roses. Ta -da. Ta -da. There's our segue. What a gorgeous, gorgeous flower. Those yellows and oranges and pinks on there, that's just fantastic. Thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we got uh, a lot of clouds. It looks like there may be a little bit of a star showing up there, so not a complete cloud cover, but there is uh, more clouds out there this morning, unlike the past couple of mornings. 66 degrees. Temperatures are almost 20 degrees above where it's been the past few days. 61 in Bernie, 65 at Canyon Lake, and the humidity is up in the upper 50s. Dew points are up in the upper 50s and some low 60s around here. So you definitely notice it when you step outside and the humidity is going to continue to stay on the higher side and actually go up a little bit with these southeasterly winds. Now, later on this afternoon, evening hours, obviously starting off in the hill country, there's a front moving on through here. So that's going to knock temperatures down this evening and it will pull in some drier air, but it's not like it's going to be just clearing things out. We'll still have plenty of clouds around here. We're not going to clear out until Sunday afternoon. And it's interesting what different computer models are doing with this front. Some are much more like this computer model, much more aggressive with this front and really pulling it down through here and keeping us on the colder side tomorrow afternoon. Now the humidity jumping ahead in time going into Sunday morning is going to start to come back up. And so what that's going to do is really destabilize the atmosphere and that's going to uh, help with the stronger, potentially severe storms late tomorrow night, early, early on Sunday. It is definitely cold in behind that front. 30 degrees in Amarillo, 37 in Lubbock as of right now. And as far as temperatures, we'll make it up into the upper 70s later on today and then start to drop down when the front moves on through here. We're going to be starting off right around the low 50s tomorrow morning. And this computer model, this is one of those that keeps us definitely on the cold side, only in the upper 50s. I think we're going to be kind of doing a blend of some different computer models. I think we'll be in the upper 60s for high temperature tomorrow, but still well below normal, obviously. We will have some scattered showers around the area today, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. Same thing tomorrow. And then going into tomorrow night into Sunday morning, we will have more showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. Storm Prediction Center does have that marginal risk for a strong or severe storm late tomorrow night, early on Sunday, basically for the northern half or northeastern half of our viewing area. 70 today at noon, a couple of showers around the area are possible. Some missed this morning as well. And then high temperature today up to 73. And then temperatures will be dropping down later on this evening as the front moves through. The wind's going to shift around out of the northeast. Tomorrow we start off at 50. I'm going for 68 for a high temperature tomorrow. We will have some showers around here. And then temperatures stay basically steady tomorrow night into Sunday morning. And we'll have some showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the stronger side, potentially severe, although most most of that would be up further up to the northeast. Then we clear on out. Humidity will drop somewhat Sunday afternoon, really heating things up, but humidity is definitely going to be a factor next week and hot temperatures rain Wednesday. And don't forget Fiesta at Home coming up next week. Yeah, Monday night, the River Parade. Yep. Friday Battle of Flowers. That's in the afternoon. It won't be in the morning like it usually is when it's live. It'll be two to three, I believe. Uh, two to five. Oh, two to, well, of course. Two to, and preceding that, yes. a, a special Fiesta uh, essay live. And then next Saturday, week from Saturday, is the uh, Flambeau Parade. So Fiesta Fun. at home. And then uh, I think even the band festival is going to be online, too. I think from that's last year, all of last year. So it is. Uh, it is. All that's on KSAT.com. Mike, thank you, as in always. In November, we do it live. Do it live and for real, which uh, we get our chicken on a stick then. 552, 66 degrees. Coming up next, more on unique ways people are showing love and support to healthcare workers in the age of the coronavirus. Big three numbers this morning are. No lotto. Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of Good Morning America, President Trump is laying out new guidelines to reopening the country. He is uh, doing it in phases to safely return to work and school, but giving the power to governors to decide. One of those governors, Michigan's Gretchen Whitmer, is going to join us live as she faces pushback over the stay-at-home orders that she put in place. We'll have it all coming up right here on GMA. About five till right now, Dr. Anthony Fauci is not just a world-renowned infectious disease specialist. For some, he is now a larger-than-life figure for Americans looking for answers. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more on Dr. Fauci's new claim to fame. New epidemiologic. He doesn't mince words. See, that's thoroughly preposterous, untrue, and actually ridiculous. He's not one to applaud his own work, and he'd probably hide his face if presented with the latest token of love for Dr. Anthony Fauci. We feel he is a superhero in our company. And a superhero gets a cape emblazoned with a mask and an F for Fauci. 
Fauci socks already have a toehold. Pair them with the stuff, Fauci. The New England toy company usually makes plush characters, but with part of the proceeds going to charity, prepare for a cuddly version of the doctor. He just looks like uh, everybody's grandfather. Fauci fans can drink from the handmade mug that one owner calls his cup of reassurance. Advance orders for this have been so strong that the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame says it's their best-selling bobblehead ever. With a $25 price tag, five bucks goes towards protective gear. Already they've presented a check for $100,000 to the American Hospital Association. Frontline workers get their dose of love daily at 7 p.m. when New Yorkers clap to show they care. They even got a New York, New York sing-along. And transportation workers got their horns tooted. Mid-afternoon Thursday. But this look of love had everyone swooning. Two nurse anesthetists, a married couple, had bickered on their way to work at Tampa General Hospital. This is the moment between surgeries when they locked eyes and made up. Mindy Brock told the AP, What's important is that we stick together, and not just Ben and I, but the human race right now. They're not letting coronavirus stress burst their bubble. Jeannie Mose, CNN, New York. Makes me smile. Right now it's 557, 66 degrees. Still ahead on the next hour, smart devices are supposed to provide you with convenience and safety, but could they also be putting your security at risk? We will take a closer look at that story coming up. Outside right now with Transguide 1604 and Calabra, we have a line of cars scattered out there. Any accidents to talk about? Officer Nick Solis has Time Saver Traffic coming up. Happening today across San Antonio, hundreds of meals will be delivered by the San Antonio Food Bank to people's homes. But how you can sign up for the next event, I have those details for you just ahead on GMSA. President Trump outlining guidelines for the country to reopen. I'm Alex Pache in Washington, and I'll have details coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. Those beautiful, crisp, cold mornings are a thing of the past. Ah, but a fond memory. Rain's coming our way. Mike has your details. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Friday. It is April 17th. Yay. Happy Friday, everybody. And Please wear purple today. Yeah, it's virtual purple up day today. JBSA wants to spread that along on the news around Military City USA. Yes, this is what it's to celebrate and honor military children and give the thanks for their support that they provide to the Air and Space Force mission. Wear purple, post your pictures of you and your children on social media. Because even with the physical distancing, rather from COVID-19, we can be socially connected. It's also the month of the military child. But anyway, that's why we are wearing purple today, including Mike Osterhage. So thank you to our military. We do appreciate you very much. And the children, because, yeah, they have to move a lot and they also have to sacrifice. Yes, indeed they do. And I like your purple tie. Thank you very much. So um, the question, Mike, do yes. we see rain today or is it more of a tomorrow early Sunday thing? Both. Uh, we'll see some showers scattered about the area today. There may be a little bit of mist around the area this morning. I haven't seen any reports of it, but just kind of watch out if it's uh, damp on some of the roads. And 66 degrees, just a couple of days ago. Yesterday we got down into the upper 40s. We were at 45 a couple of days ago. Whole different story, though. 61 in uh, Tarpley, Kerrville, Bandera, 59 lost Maples right now. And these numbers, dew points, have definitely come up compared to the past couple of days. So you notice the humidity when you step outside. Molds on the low side. No oak showed up yesterday, which was good news, obviously. And throughout the day, we are going to have temperatures that will uh, go from the mid-60s, getting up into right about the, uh, well, I'll call it low 70s at noon. And then we won't heat up too awfully much from there. I'm going to go for 73 for high temperature later on today. We will start to see the wind shift around late this afternoon, this evening. Uh, obviously, first of all, in the hill country with the front moving on through here. Now, uh, we'll have some showers as the front moves through. It may touch off a couple of uh, stray thunderstorms or two. And then temperatures are going to be dropping down. It will be cool again tomorrow morning, but we'll have a lot of humidity and some showers around there. And then we do have a chance for some storms early Sunday. Get ready, because after that, it heats up. 
Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. And uh, I know, what was it, last half hour you had an accident to talk about? Yeah, Ingram and Oak Hill Drive looks like that's all cleared up now, okay. Mike. So that's good news for everyone out there. So right now we're not dealing with any accidents. Uh, traffic is flowing very smoothly all around the city. And that's good news for everybody. So let's take a look at some drive times. This is wrong. So this, I guess, is still glitch from yesterday. The road is not closed there. Uh, 1604 to downtown. Sorry about that. But if you're coming from uh, southbound 35, a city of New Braunfels is 1604. It's 17 minutes and then beyond there, it's probably like 13, 13 minutes. Usually that's what it is. It, it is not closed. All right, let's take a look at the trans guy. 281 at Spruce, but by the quarry looking really good right now. 10 at a crossroads over there looking good. 410, I-10 interchange really, really smooth. 37 and 410 on the southeast side looking great. And uh, 35 at Ben's Engelman on the northeast side looking smooth. All right, everyone, please have a safe trip to work. Buckle that seatbelt. Like Mike said, there's mist on the roadway. Please watch that speed. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio Food Bank demand has increased significantly since the pandemic began, and today they're prepping another mule distribution with the help of VIA. Alicia Pereira joins us live this morning with more on this partnership to feed our community. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Well, the biggest challenge that the San Antonio Food Bank has is not having enough resources, so they're still making a call to the community to make those donations to help people. And today we won't be seeing a mega distribution like we saw last week, but they still have a big task ahead of them. They're prepping for 650 meals to be delivered to families, and this also includes supplies for them. Via bus operators are stepping up to help those meals and supplies be safely delivered to those who have pre-registered. These packages will be dropped off to nearly 500 locations throughout the area. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Michael Guerra referred to the 500 plus food pantries in San Antonio as their first line of defense, adding that there's nothing the food bank hates, hates more than someone being turned away because they don't have food for them. So again, a big need from the community. If you're able to make a donation, that's going to go a long way. And today's registration is full, but if you still need help, you can pre-register for another drop off. The number to call is 210-341-8326. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Here in Bear County, the number of coronavirus cases continues to go up. The number now reaching almost 1,000 people in our area. During Mayor Ron Nirenberg's daily update last night, it was reported an additional 28 people have tested positive. That brings the total number to 918. When breaking the numbers down, we see 76 people in the hospital. That number is actually down from the last report. And the number of deaths have stayed the same at 37. Meanwhile, we are told that more people are doing better. 176 have recovered from the illness. The numbers also writing in, uh, numbers also still coming in in counties around us. Hayes County seeing 117, Wilson County with 19, Comal remains at 43, Guadalupe 53, Atascosa 9, Medina County is 15, Kendall 14, Bandera County now has four cases with one reported at a nursing home. Meanwhile, the Tejeda Veterans Nursing Home in Floresville now has eight that have tested positive for COVID-19. Back here at home, three San Antonio firefighters from the same fire station have tested positive for COVID-19. While Fire Chief Charles Hood did not name the station, he did say all firefighters assigned to the facility will be placed on a 14-day quarantine. In a statement, he went on to say, quote, the fire station and all fire apparatus have also been deep cleaned and disinfected as part of the effort. The quarantine of these firefighters will in no way affect our service delivery, end quote. City of San Antonio and Bear County have amended their emergency orders are now mandating that people over the age of 10 wear face coverings when in public. The new orders are effective immediately and businesses have three days to provide masks to their employees. Exemptions include people exercising outside, drivers alone in their own cars, and while in a building that requires surveillance like a bank. Face coverings can be homemade masks, a bandana, scarf, or handkerchief. Order also requires that retailers that are still open limit occupancy to 25% of their normal limit. Golf courses are allowed to operate with some restrictions. Social distancing must be maintained and no equipment rentals are allowed. 607 right now in the national news this morning. President Trump has outlined new federal guidelines for opening the country and getting the economy back up and running. Those new guidelines coming as lawmakers and business leaders press the administration for more virus testing. ABC's Alex Prochet has the details. 
President Trump laying out his blueprint to reopen the country. America wants to be open and Americans want to be open. His guidelines call for a phased approach, though he says it'll be up to governors to decide when to lift restrictions. States would enter phase one after they see a two-week decline in the number of people with COVID symptoms and in the percentage of people testing positive for the virus. And once a state can check those boxes, people would still be advised to maintain social distancing and avoid socializing in groups of more than 10, but businesses could look at ways to slowly return to work. If states are able to go two weeks without a rebound of COVID cases, they can move to phase two, where you could see some places like restaurants, movie theaters, and bars reopen with social distancing protocols. The president, hopeful parts of the country could reopen by month's end. I think 29 states are in that ball game. Ohio's governor believes his state can be one of them. And I'm an optimist. Uh, we, we can do this. Ohio, part of a new coalition of seven Midwestern states working together on a plan to reopen. Seven states on the East Coast and three states on the West Coast forging similar alliances. Though some, like New York, have already extended their shutdowns until at least May 15th. Governors and health officials alike agree the key to the future is testing and tracking the contacts of people who are infected to prevent further spread. Dr. Deborah Burks on CNN. There is no disease where we test 140 million workers on a weekly basis. CDC already has about 500 plus people on the ground in many of the states. The big fear, a potential second spike in some states. I mean, uh, let's face it, this, this is uncharted water. There may be some setbacks that we may have to pull back a little and then go forward. And while testing is key, tracking the spread is just as important. In Salt Lake City, the health department there says it has successfully tracked 85% of the cases in that community. The state of Massachusetts also has an ambitious tracing program in the works. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. New this morning, a 16-year-old is recovering in the hospital after being shot in the foot. According to San Antonio police, it happened last night at Spoonbill Court. The teen was reportedly trying to buy something off the shooter's Instagram page. While meeting with the suspect, police say the gunman shot the teen in the foot. SAPD says the suspect got away from the scene in a vehicle. Also new this morning, a man is dead after a three-vehicle crash on the city's south side. It happened near the intersection of Highway 16 and Mission Gate just after midnight. Police say a maroon vehicle was driving on the highway from the access road when it was hit by a truck and someone in a white car. San Antonio police say the victim in his 30s was pronounced dead at the scene. None of the other drivers were hurt. In your morning headlines, R&B artist R. Kelly's day in Brooklyn court has been delayed. Originally scheduled for July, the singer's trial for several charges has now been moved to September. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York, lawyers on both sides said they wanted the trial to take place before his federal trial in Chicago. That's set to take place in October. Charges Kelly faces includes child pornography and violations of what's called the Mann Act. 6, 11, 66 degrees. A little American town being dubbed as the safest place in the country right now. Still ahead, where the place where there is not one single case of coronavirus. A message from SAWS to get a fresh breath of air while under quarantine. We've got you covered. Up next, we take a look back at what you may have missed this week. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're in for a couple days of rain. That beautiful weather we had is just a thing of the past now. Mike has details coming up. Just about 6.15 on your Friday morning from trying to find an open curbside slot at HEB to a local principal personally congratulating the top 10 students of the senior class. It's been a busy week on KSAT.com. Uh, our KSAT producer, Gretchen Naruzzi, gives a look back Oh, it's actually Erica Hernandez who's going to have this story. But anyway, here's your Week in Review. This big blob of grossness is what happens when you flush wipes down the toilet. More people are turning to wipes right now, and San Antonio Water System staff knows this because they are having to fix more clogged pipes. Sauce tells us there is no such thing as flushable wipes and that anything other than toilet paper should be thrown in the trash. Trying to find an open curbside slot at HEB? A freelance software developer in San Antonio has built a new website that allows customers to search for curbside availability. The website allows consumers to search by zip code to see the soonest available opening at their local store. We have a link up to this website so you can start searching. It's nothing but sad news for current high school seniors who are missing out on a lot of memorable moments. Somerset High School principal Justin Saunders set out to personally deliver students some good news. He visited each of the top 10 of the senior class to let them know their class ranking. 
and a first in over 10 years for Somerset, the entire top 10 was comprised of all females. And speaking of high school seniors, a local photography business is giving back by providing free quick take senior sessions. All you have to do is call to reserve your spot. Also, they've started a portrait for heroes program where others can give full sessions to an essential worker. And finally, we've lost count on what day of quarantine it is, but if you need some sunshine, it may be worth taking the family for a hike. Right now, all state parks are closed, but city trails at parks are open, including some natural areas. We have a list of spots to visit. Just make sure to continue to practice social distancing. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Oh, we've got Gretchen coming up. Yeah. Just that was, it's a different story. That, yeah, different. That's later. Right now, let's find out about your forecast. And little known fact, well, we know that you can sing very well, but he will just blurt out songs when he's, something catches his fancy, and it is very entertaining. <laughs> Who, Mike? No, you. <laughs> yeah, it's me. I was, singing, <laughs> I was singing along to one of the commercials right now. It's just a, a habit I, I have. That is men's. Uh, that oh. is Mike. <laughs> Do you like Elvis there, Nick? Yeah, my dad My dad likes Elvis. We grew up with Elvis songs a lot You want to sing some Elvis for us? No, I'm good, but my go-to <laughs> karaoke song is Burning Hearts uh, by Elvis Presley. Well, you'd rock some karaoke the holidays. I remember that. Yeah, I did. That's right. <laughs> He's a good singer. It was a good time. All right, not much going on right now in traffic. Uh, just uh, drive times here. If you're on westbound 10 from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, you got a 12-minute commute. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, you got a 13 minute commute. Not bad times there. Taking a look all around the city, 10 and 1604 looking really good right now on the northwest side. Hardly any cars there. 1604 at Calabria though, Alamo Ranch looking really, really kind of busy there. Kind of like a normal uh, Friday and 10 at the Y light as can be. Well, I hope everyone has a great safe day to work. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Karaoke rock star. Then there are the rest of us like Mike who probably we shouldn't sing. Yeah, yeah, probably. No, Mike can carry a tune. He's good. No. Are we hearing the really? same guy? <laughs> yes. No. He's like, I'm standing right here. <laughs> 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 oh, hi. We're back on. Okay. Hi, oh, everybody. Okay. He got there. Serves you right anyway. Yeah. Uh, take a look at this picture, and this is a, a great one. The ring around the sun. It is a, I don't called sun dogs, the, the halo around there. It's basically a rainbow around the sun, and it's caused by, obviously, you know, usually rainbows are caused by the uh, sun shining through little water droplets. Well, when you have a lot of high level moisture, they are very, very tiny ice crystals and they act like little tiny prisms. And so that's why you get that nice uh, circle there around the sun. Great picture thing, and it can happen with the moon as well sometimes. And a lot of times it looks like it can happen when it looks like there's not anything up there in the atmosphere, but there are those little tiny uh, ice crystals. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. Got some clouds starting off this morning, and it's much, much milder than the past couple of days. Temperatures are 15, 20 degrees warmer, and there's also the humidity out there. And it's been getting pumped in on these southeasterly winds. You started to feel it go up a little bit more yesterday afternoon, and then it's really come up this morning. There may be some out there this morning, so watch out for that, and then we'll see uh, at least a couple of showers trying to develop throughout the day. Now, we're going to continue to see the humidity come up through the afternoon. Then a front's moving on through here. Now, this computer model is much more aggressive with this front, bringing through, I think, a little bit earlier and also really pulling down the colder air with it. Some computer models are still not quite in complete agreement as to how cold it's going to be, especially tomorrow. But we will see the front move through later on today. The wind is going to be shifting around and it's going to pull in relatively drier air, but we'll still have a lot of clouds around tomorrow. So it's not going to be what we just got done with as far as the beautiful weather. Then going back into to, or going forward into uh, tomorrow night and Sunday morning, more humidity around here, and that's going to set the stage for potentially some stronger severe storms late tomorrow night, early Sunday morning. Back to the front. It is once again a doozy. I mean, 30 at uh, 10 at Callahan. I'm, I'm kind of interrupting myself. I just looked at one of the trans guide cameras. There's a little bit of mist on the uh, camera lens out there by uh, 10 and Callahan. So watch that. All right. The front now is going to move through here. And like I said, as far as temperatures, we'll make it up into the 70s today. Then temperatures drop down this evening. We'll be in the low 50s starting off tomorrow. This model only keeps us in the upper 50s, but I think we're actually going to make it mid to upper 60s tomorrow. It's kind of taking a blend of a few different uh, computer models. And then we go into tomorrow night. Like I said, we do have another 
kind of disturbance moving through here, and that's going to give us a chance for showers and thunderstorms early Sunday morning. Then we'll clear out. Then we really start to heat up. It's going to be back to April weather and then some 70 today at noon. A couple of showers. Watch out for some mist this morning and then later on this afternoon, a high temperature up to uh, 73 degrees and we will see the wind shift around to the northeast. Then temperatures will be dropping down with that cool front as the front moves through, maybe even a thunderstorm or two. And then tomorrow we'll have showers around here going for 68 for a high temperature. And like I said, that's kind of a blend of some of the uh, computer models Then. Uh, Temperatures stay basically steady into Sunday morning. Some uh, showers and thunderstorms, then 85 in the afternoon. Humidity will be OK on Sunday afternoon, but the humidity is going to be coming in next week with hot temperatures, mid to upper 80s. Wow, like I said, just saw a couple of spots out there. Yeah, 10 at Callahan, a little bit of a mist on the lens, so watch it. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Right now it is 622, 66 degrees. We'll say you do whistle great bird noises, though. See, there you go. Thank you, Bob White. The safest place in America right now, just ahead, a tiny town. Here it goes. I had to start it. That has yet to report a single case of coronavirus. Welcome to Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kolache. We are Circle K. When I have a breakout from eczema, the itching, the scratching, it puts my life on hold. Gold Bond Eczema Relief relieves five frustrating symptoms of eczema with two times the soothing oatmeal. So much better. Gold Bond, ultimate lotion, ultimate skin. Since everyone's at home, binge button all. Planet Fitness is bringing the judgment-free zone to you. Join us on Facebook Live for daily home work-ins like puppy playtime, homeschool recess, and race car cardio. Plus, we put our gym in your pocket with an app packed full of workouts for everyone and trainers you totally high five if you could. Ditch the binge butt and work in with us. Download our free app today. Planet Fitness, united we move. I had a heart problem. I was told to begin my aspirin regimen. I just didn't listen until I almost lost my life. My doctors again ordered me to take aspirin and I do. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Listen to the doctor. Take it seriously. In this morning's GMA First Look, inside the American town with zero cases of the coronavirus. We are staying that six feet apart, but even in the grocery store, the hardware store, post office, uh, there are markings on the floor where we are staying that distance away. Residents are taking COVID-19 seriously. The fire chief attributes his town's lack of cases to maintaining social distance and access to testing. We did test 66 people uh, within our community, including some essential workers and first responders. Uh, the next testing is going to be this Sunday. And my goal is to get three to 400 uh, people in my community tested, maybe more. If someone were to get sick, Point Roberts has a small medical clinic attached to the fire station. The nearest hospital is on the mainland. So what lessons can all of us learn from this community? Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Your time now, 626, almost 627. Temperature outside, much milder, 66 degrees. More preliminary studies have given a positive result when it comes to plasma donation by recovered COVID-19 patients. Just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we have some of the findings from Methodist Hospital Texan. And checking the roadways with TransGuide will get an official update on your morning commute if you are commuting when we come back. The coronavirus pandemic has caused an epidemic of financial struggling, but the city of San Antonio has an idea on the table to help. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. Happening today, VIA bus drivers are partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to deliver hundreds of meals to people in need. Today's slots are full, but I'll tell you just ahead on GMSA how you can register for the next drop off. And the latest details on unemployment after 22 million Americans have filed in just four weeks. How the White House is responding. And here at home, we've got moisture moving into the area. The wipers are going out there right now. One of our camps, this is the I-10-410 interchange. We'll get you updated on traffic and weather together with our experts. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is April 17th. Yay, made it to Friday, everybody. And fortunately, that beautiful weather we've been having 
Well, I'll let Mike type out that in a minute. But you have had a pretty relaxing morning today. On it's the been relaxing. The I've had one accident. It's been real busy for me. But, <laughs> but no, other than that, things are looking good out there. With this mist, could change. Well, Mike, you said it was coming in, and it has started to show up this morning. Yeah, and obviously in that vicinity, 410 I-10, the I-10 Callahan uh, trans guy camera was showing a little bit of mist as well. So just kind of watch it on uh, some of the roads as we see it. It doesn't really look like there's anything out there by the airport, but could be. So take it easy. 62 in hello to 65 Balverde. Temperatures are about 20 degrees above where they've been the past couple of mornings. The humidity obviously is back and as that humidity continues to pump back in here, that's why we're now starting now starting to see some of that mist. Molds on the low side. No oak showed up yesterday. Pecan and grass are also low and throughout the day. So we've got uh, cloudy mist, warm and humid this morning. Uh, a few showers scattered about the area, about a 30-40% chance for rain today. We'll make it to the low to mid 70s. Then a front's going to be moving on through here. Obviously, first uh, in the hill country and then working its way down south. That's going to be late this afternoon in toward dinner time. That's going to drop temperatures down. Now we will have a chilly start tomorrow morning down to about 50 here in town. Uh, some showers and we make it to the upper 60s, sort of a blend of some of the computer models. Some keep us very cold. Some keep us much, much warmer going for the upper 60s tomorrow. Then tomorrow night there is a chance for a couple of stronger thunderstorms, maybe even on the severe side in the wee hours of Sunday morning. And after that, we are going to heat up. We'll have low humidity Sunday afternoon, but boy, it's going to be hot mid 80s and it's going to get hotter after that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Once again, time saver traffic. And yeah, you had that one accident earlier this morning and that's it. That's been it, Mike. But like you said, if there's some mists that come through, there could be some accidents. So you need to be careful when you're driving to work today, everyone. OK, slow your speed down, follow the speed limit, buckle your seatbelt, no brights and just keep some distance from the car in front of you so that we all get to work safely and we don't have any accidents. And uh, that's about it, so just make sure you get to work safe. All right, drive times. Eastbound I-10 for MPAP 46 is 16.04, 36 minutes. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side is 16.04 to I-35, 13 minutes. All right, let's look at, let's look outside of the trans guide. Uh, 35 and 37, it's looking good. Traffic's light to moderate, not very, not very heavy at all. 35 at Evans, same. Uh, things are picking up there on both north and southbound lanes, but still looking good. And uh, let's do one more here. Uh, looks like it froze on me, but that's good. Just please be careful and get to work safely. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, help could just be one vote away for people who've been left struggling financially due to the coronavirus pandemic. The San Antonio City Council is considering a plan that would put more money into the pockets of families who need help with things like food and rent. Katrina Weber is downtown with details and a live report. And you mentioned that council members are considering this plan. When will they actually vote on it? Well, it is on the agenda for next Thursday. Now, this idea, this plan was presented to the city council just yesterday by city staff members. It calls for rebranding the current assistance program and calling it the COVID-19 Emergency Housing Assistance Program. City staffers say it could help about 10,000 families in San Antonio, not only with their rent or mortgage, but also with utility payments, food and gas. The $15.8 million budget would be funded by pooling money the city already has with federal dollars and private donations. All told, they say each family could get about $1,500 to cover the payments for their homes, as well as money for food and gas. And again, this is not a done deal just yet. The city council is going to be voting on this next Thursday. It's scheduled to vote. As of right now, it does seem that city council members are still trying to work out some of the finer details about this idea. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Happening today across San Antonio, hundreds of meals will be delivered to people in need. The San Antonio Food Bank says their demand has increased significantly during the pandemic, and now they're partnering up with bus drivers to make sure those meals are delivered safely. Alicia Pereira live with more details ahead of today's distribution. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, today we definitely won't see a mega distribution like we saw last week with people lined up for hours, but the San Antonio Food Bank and Via bus drivers still have a very busy day ahead of them. They're going to be delivering more than 650 meals to more than to almost 500 location and this delivery does include of course the meals as well as supplies. The food bank says they still need donations from the community as of course there's a huge need here in San Antonio right now. The meals and supplies that will be delivered today are for people that have pre-registered and today all slots are now full. But if you need help you can call the food pantry hotline for a location near you. The food bank also stated that there 
they, that with the help of volunteers, they'll be delivering groceries next week in different areas of San Antonio. So that number to call in case you do need assistance from the food bank, supplies, food, meals is 210-341-8326. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Also involving coronavirus this morning, parts of the country are starting to move forward amid the crisis. Meanwhile, researchers at the University of Washington are updating their coronavirus pandemic model. Seeing as John Lawrence shows us the model often touted by the administration as whether it's actually making progress. The COVID-19 pandemic still has a grip on the United States. Places like New York seem to be stuck at the peak for longer than we originally expected. But there are positive signs. Looks like a number of states in the South, for example, will have smaller epidemics than we were expecting. There are more than 671,000 confirmed cases in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University, but millions of Americans are affected by COVID-19 financially, while social distancing and stay-at-home orders are in place. The bills don't stop between now and then and the money is rapidly running out. 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment over the last four weeks, and some are treading water with their rainy day savings. I would say by the end of April, maybe first two weeks of May, that'll be gone. The White House in a tweet is calling on Congress to pass increased funding for the Paycheck Protection Program, saying a simple one-page bill will get the job done, no liberal pet projects. Democrats say Republicans are preventing progress on the PPP, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting, serious flaws are keeping far too many small businesses from receiving the resources they need. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Metro Health is training medical students to help track the spread of COVID-19 in our community as numbers continue to rise. Metro Health officials call it a tedious task. When you have community-wide transmission like this, sometimes it becomes difficult to pinpoint and exactly identify the source. The process begins by reaching out to the person who came in contact with the patient and making sure they're not symptomatic. From there, they're asked to quarantine for two weeks. Medical experts at San Antonio Metro Health say cities' emergency orders have proven to be beneficial, but warns if people aren't following social distancing guidelines, things could quickly change. Meanwhile, preliminary studies are showing some positive results when it comes to the so-called power plasma. It's when plasma is donated by recovered COVID-19 patients. The treatment was first used in China, and now it's being used right here in San Antonio. The chief of medicine at Methodist Hospital, Texan, Texan, says patients' fevers resolved quicker, x-ray findings improved, and overall they felt better. But there is still a need for donors, so if you want to donate, contact the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center by email at COVID-19 at SouthTexasBlood.org. There's also a phone number, 210-731-2719. More information on how you can help the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, the latest numbers in and around Bear County, and more, just click on the Coronavirus tab at the top of our website at KSAT.com. Well, April is the month of the military child, but today is specifically Purple Up Day. And because of social distancing, we're celebrating it virtually to give thanks for the support of military children because they provide so much to the Air and Space Force mission. We're asking you to wear purple and post your pictures of you and your kids on social media. Even during these hard times, we want to make sure we celebrate and honor military children. And we've got our purple on today. Yes, we do. 639, 66 degrees. Smart devices are supposed to provide you with convenience and safety, but can they also put your security at risk? Next on GMSA, what you need to know about not so smart devices. Six forty three smart technology can enhance our homes, our cars, even our wallets. Yeah, but can reliance on tech over old-fashioned traditional methods come with a downside. KSAT producer Gretchen Neruzzi lays out the darker side to technology. Smart TVs, smart cameras, and even smart speakers. Why can't you trust an atom? How smart is your home? Because they make up literally everything. We have a connected thermostat. We have a smart speaker. I know I have an Alexa. But can going digital on your home open the door to unwanted consequences? Video doorbell company Ring recently urged 3,000 users to change their passwords after their login information may have been exposed online. Hackers can use that information to watch you and your family at home. 
Hackers can also gain access to other connected devices in your home through your smart TV. And with some smart TVs, the manufacturer is sharing details about your viewing habits to third parties. Finally, your smart device failures may not only be due to hacking, but simply a power outage or dead battery. Devices such as smart locks can lock consumers out of their home if there is a power outage and batteries need to be replaced to keep it working. And don't forget, smart devices connected to your smartphone become useless if your phone is lost or the battery dies. Also, always do software updates to fix flaws in security and have a backup plan. For example, with a smart lock, carry a traditional key to open the door in case if the power goes out. For GMSA, I'm Gretchen Neruzzi. Good job, Gretchen. She did fantastic. Yeah, she's boothing right now. She's like, oh, I'm hearing my voice. I think you did great. Let's check in with our traffic expert, Officer Nick Solis. How you doing, Nick? <laughs> What's up, Mark? Uh, I'm doing good. Traffic's doing great right now. No accidents out there to report. Seriously, all over the city, it, things are going smooth. No construction, no accidents, and it doesn't look like the mist has affected anything yet. So if you are on the way to work today, expect a smooth ride and a smooth commute. Things are looking good. All right, let's take a look outside. 35 at Evans is looking good. 35 and 410 looking great there. And uh, what else we have? 37 at Jones. Remember, that left lane, when it's normal traffic, always got backed up around this time. And 281 and 410 uh, looking really, really good. Thank you, Nick. We did see some mist out there, uh, northwest side, 410. 410, I-10. I-10 Callahan area. So just kind of watch out for that and maybe some around the area. So. All right. Like this picture. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. And the cool thing about it is two different colors, same cactus bush. How about that? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Childers. I always post some very nice looking KSAC Connect pictures. All right. We got lots of clouds starting off this morning. It looks like I can't tell if that's just the usual shine off the roads or if that's kind of a little sheen from some uh, some moisture on the road over there by 410. Temperature is about 20 degrees above where they were the past couple of days. Of course, we got more humidity out there because the winds yesterday afternoon started to shift around to the southeast. You kind of felt the humidity coming up a little bit, and now it's really up there, and it's going to continue to go up throughout the afternoon. Then we have a front moving on through here. Now, this computer model is very aggressive with this front and really pulls it down through here, really pulls in much, much colder air, especially for tomorrow. We will see temperatures drop during the evening hours and humidity will be dropping down somewhat for tomorrow just because temperatures are going to be lower and then it's going to start to come back up. And then Sunday morning, that's when with the return of the humidity we will have um, kind of much more unstable atmosphere and that's going to uh, at least give us the chance for a couple of stronger thunderstorms, maybe a severe storm early, early Sunday. It has dropped down in Amarillo, now 28 degrees, 51 in Abilene. So this cooler air will continue to come on in here. We will make it up into the low 70s later on today. And then by about dinner time or so, obviously sooner in the hill country, temperatures will be dropping off. We'll start off in the low 50s tomorrow. This computer model only keeps us in about the upper 50s, maybe low 60s. Other computer models have us warmer. I'm kind of going with the blend of it right now. So looking at the upper 60s for high temperature tomorrow, but it is going to be definitely a chilly day and it's going to be on the damp side as well. We will have a few showers around today and even a thunderstorm or two as that front moves on through here. And then tomorrow we'll have some scattered showers around the area and going into Sunday morning. Like I said, there's that chance for a strong to potentially severe storm, and that's why Storm Prediction Center has the marginal risk for the northern half of our viewing area. Again, that's in the wee hours of Sunday day morning with some of those thunderstorms, then that's going to clear on out of here and we will have some westerly winds. And so therefore it's going to be dry on Sunday afternoon, but temperatures are going to be skyrocketing Sunday. Then the humidity comes back in next week. 70 today at noon, a couple of showers around the area, maybe even a thunderstorm thrown in this afternoon as that front moves through. We make it up into the low 70s. Wind will shift around to the northeast. We start off chilly tomorrow, 50. I'm going for 68 for a high temperature tomorrow, and then we stay kind of steady overnight into Sunday. Some morning storms, maybe strong or severe, and then we're going to be getting into the 80s, another chance of rain by Wednesday. Leslie, Mark? Mike, thank you very much. Right Mark. now we're at, yes, ma'am. I just was going to keep saying the names. Nick. Okay. Nick. <laughs> Who else? Who else do we have? Oh, we're, on, over there? we're on a skeleton crew right now. <laughs> 648, 66 degrees. Robert. Uh, Robert. Knowing Robert. the right thing to say to people who have been diagnosed with cancer. Tomorrow on GMSA, a few tips on what to say to those who are going through that difficult time. Outside with live cam, news you need to know before you go. Boy, the morning show is moving right along. You're watching GMSA.
Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of Good Morning America, President Trump is laying out new guidelines to reopening the country. He is uh, doing it in phases to safely return to work and school, but giving the power to governors to decide. One of those governors, Michigan's Gretchen Whitmer, is going to join us live as she faces pushback over the stay-at-home orders that she put in place. We'll have it all coming up right here on GMA. The city council is considering a plan to help battle financial troubles created by the coronavirus pandemic. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The council is set to vote on that idea next week. Now, this is a plan that was presented to council members yesterday by city staff members. It calls for rebranding a current assistance program and calling it the COVID-19 Emergency Housing Assistance Program. Staff members who put this idea together say with a $15.8 million a budget, they could help about 10,000 families who are struggling because of the pandemic. That's based on the idea that each would get about $1,500 for rent or mortgage, plus other money for things like food and gas. The plan would pool money that the city has with funds from the federal government and private donations. Again, this is still just a plan. The city council is scheduled to vote on this next Thursday. Reporting from downtown Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Food Bank will deliver more than 650 meals today to help those in need, and they're partnering with VIA bus drivers to make it happen. VIA bus drivers are stepping up to make sure that those meals are safely delivered to those who have been pre-registered. These packages will be dropped off to nearly 500 locations throughout San Antonio. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Michael Guerra referred to the food pantries in San Antonio as their first line of defense. There's more than 500 in the area. Guerra added, there's nothing the food bank hates more than someone being turned away because they don't have food for them, which is why they still need the help from the community through donations. Today's registration is full, but you can pre-register for the next drop off. All you have to do is call the San Antonio Food Bank hotline for assistance. The number is 210-341-8326. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. One last look at traffic before we head to Good Morning America. Nick, what's going on out there? Yeah, we're just going to take a look at the trans guide here because things are looking good, but I just saw an accident pop up right here on the screen. Looks like 151 and 410. I just saw some emergency responder lights going on there. If you tune in around uh, 726, I'll give you an update on that accident. But look, that looks like it's 151 at 410. That looks like it's going to be the eastbound lanes going towards the airport. No spectacular sunrise this morning. Watch out also for some mist. We've seen some earlier this morning over there by uh, the northwest side, 410, I-10 area, up in toward uh, Callahan. Very warm temperatures, um, 15, 20 degrees above the past couple of days. Obviously, a lot of humidity out there. 73 for a high temperature. A couple of showers around, maybe a thunderstorm. Front's going to move through late this afternoon, dinner time. That'll lock temperatures down. It is going to be chilly tomorrow morning. We will have more showers around uh, tomorrow. High in only upper 60s and then some potentially strong storms early on Sunday, and then we're going to clear out 85 degrees, and it's going to stay hot next week. Another binge-watching weekend indoors with the family, it looks like. That sounds like a good idea, especially at least you can get out Sunday afternoon. It's That's going to be true. very nice, but warm, but yeah, tomorrow's going to be kind of the binge-watching day. And break out the sunscreen. That's yes, right. indeed. Gentlemen, thank you. As always. You want to sing us out of, out of the show? No, but a good show I started on Netflix is The Innocence Files. Pretty good. Oh, I haven't heard the of that Innocence one. Files? The, Innocence the Innocence Files. Files, yeah. Very good show there. All right. watch Got it. it. Well, stay healthy, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Have a good weekend. Good morning, America's next. We're back for GMSA at 9. We'll see you then.